So we're in Barcelona MWC 22. I'm here with Mark Alera. He's the CEO of BT Consumer. Mark, thanks for joining us today in your very busy schedule. Great to be here. Thank you. Um, so you have a pretty wide portfolio of services uh, under your stewardship. How can service providers like BT get the most out of 5G in terms of consumer services sector? And how can you drive up average revenues and margins for BT? Yeah, I think we've seen a real shift actually in, in terms of what consumers are ranking as important for them, particularly driven over the last couple of years and the, and the way in which we've seen just a fundamental change to the way they're working, the way they're living, and their expectations of network performance. And, and so whether it's at home or on the move, the importance of a reliable internet connection that, that is fast, that is low latency, is really important for them, whether it's gaming, working from home, uh, consuming entertainment services, for example. So we've seen a real shift in, in, in quality uh, or, or, or to quality of networks for us. And, and so, you know, for us, having the best network, whether it's 5G or, or fibre in the home, is a really important driver of consumer consideration. So we're looking to monetise as we, as we create a converged core network, bringing fixed and mobile together, things like network slicing, dedicated quality layers, things that are really important to you, both in the home and out the home. Okay, how would that translate into a regular customer though? Because obviously slicing isn't something that people are going, they're just going to think of pizza probably when they hear the word slicing. How can you take those capabilities of what's coming with 5G and basically give, make consumers want to use it more and give you more of their dwindling amounts of money? Yeah, I mean, we certainly won't be marketing the, the services as, as slicing. I think if I said to you, look, you're in a busy house with kids that are gaming on Xbox and you've got a really important video meeting that, or video conference that you're needing to do, and I can give you a dedicated bandwidth lane that guarantees quality, reliable, low latency connection so you can hold a really effective meeting whilst the kids are, are gaming online, I think you'd say, yeah, that's worth something to me. So I think. That's an opportunity to monetize as, as one example in the home, but you know, we, we see the opportunity to give people consistent, great experiences and dedicated lanes of quality both in and out the home. And I think for many people, as I said, because reliable networks have, are now much more important to consumers than ever before. If you look at the ranking of price and quality, you've seen this shift to quality. Consumers really prepared to pay a little bit more for a higher quality network because they're doing so much more with it than ever before. They rely on it much more. That's how I think we can start to monetize it. So that's all within the realms of possibility of what you have now in your arsenal. Uh, what can mobile operators do to broaden the range of services they offer beyond traditional connectivity? Uh, will we see BT, BT Consumer expand into areas like digital banking or utilities to take advantage of that customer and billing relationship? Look, I think operators have fantastic assets. So we, we have a customer base of scale. We've got distribution nationwide. We've got billing relationship with millions of customers, device, uh, device management layers that we're responsible for, and apps and services that are used very, very frequently by consumers, in, including TV and, and, and media. So we've got a great asset base, I think, to make the most of expansion into, into new areas and this has been something I know operators have talked about for many years but I, I do feel like the capability now when you look at um, software as a service uh, expanding into new territories through partnerships is, is now a lot easier today than it would have been a few years ago for us and, and, and others too so you know we're, we're certainly having a look at opportunities what I would call close to home uh, through services that rely on great network quality and, and partnerships that we have like gaming and security and other areas like that and, and watch this space but uh, we think it's an opportunity for us and, and, and for the industry too and that's what a lot of people always come here to, to talk about. Okay, so some new offers in the pipeline then from BT maybe in 2022? Like, I think we have an opportunity to, to stretch the brand, stretch the customer relationships and, and build on the scale and reach um, and, and brand relationship we have with customers so you know, you'll, you'll, see, um, you'll see things happening from us during the course of this year and, and, and next as we uh, 
as we make some moves. So one of the biggest topics in the industry and in general these days is everything around sustainability. Um, is energy efficiency and sustainability a much bigger focus area for you these days? And are there any particular products, tools or processes that can help you to drive up your energy efficiency? Yeah, it's, it's a huge focus for us because it's a huge focus for our consumers as well. They are much more um, questioning um, of brands and, and companies that they deal with for their services that they that they get of their energy and sustainable uh, credentials and, and we're a big user of electricity uh, we consume almost 1% of the UK's power for example we have over 30,000 vehicles as a, as a company out on the road and, and so everything we're doing is focusing on getting to net zero through our own operations by 2030 and then through suppliers and customers by 2040 and that, that's really important because the bulk of the um, contribution to um, our uh, targets there are, are through suppliers and customers so working right across the supply chain ensuring we can get that path to net zero is really important for us and we've certainly seen that bit like quality and, and speed and reliability of networks be, being really important for consumers sustainable credentials is, is another one that they're very demanding of us on and quite rightly so. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and it's not just lip service anymore. This is um, real stuff that's happening, which is great to see. Um, so we're back in Barcelona. MWC is open again. And actually, there seems to be a pretty reasonable attendance, I have to say, based on, on yeah. what we've seen uh, today. Have you seen or heard anything here that's sort of got your pulse racing that's exciting you? Anything new? Well, as I said to you earlier, this is my, this is my first meeting, so <laughs> it's, 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 I'll, I'll tell you in three days. I mean, I, but, I, but, but what is interesting, I think, is, is, is as always, you know, the, the ecosystem that, that enables our services to be provided and, and allows consumers to, con to consume them. And, and we always pick up something new here, you know, whether it's a new trend or a, a new innovation or a new opportunity, generally through partnerships. I mean, everything we do is through partnerships, whether it's the network, the service, the uh, the services, the content that we provide, everything's done through partnerships and so it's great to have everybody back and talking. We've got a series of really great meetings set up and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll come back as always with a different perspective on the world. It's a great place to meet people from other countries as well and mm -hmm. the UK is a very advanced digital nation and, and we're very advanced with our networks but there's a lot to learn from a lot of other countries and, and that's what we enjoy here as well. Yeah, there's some pretty eye-catching stuff out there. I'm sure you'll You'll see it as you uh, roam around in between your meetings. And then obviously it's not just about being here on the show floor at MWC. There's the meetings outside, usually in the restaurants, a great selection there. So when you come to Barcelona, what is your tapas go-to? What's your number one food choice and with what drink? Uh, it would be the jamón ibérico and uh, pani tomate. That would be the, the one I always go for with a, with a cold beer. Great choice. We'll, we'll put that on the telecom TV menu for the rest of the week and check it out. Thank you. Mark, thanks very much for joining Thank you. us.